Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and still the voice of hardcore boxing. Right, straight into business, no messing about. Trainers, managers and promoters. People who train fighters and manage them. Not so much promoting them as well, but people who train fighters and manage fighters. Right? What's going on? You're training them and then you and you're managing them. That to me is a conflict of in, in, interest. And I don't think that's good for the sport of boxing. For the simple reason. It's going to be hard for me to do this without mentioning names. A manager is going to want to manage, is going to want to manoeuvre somebody into a position where he can get the most money for himself. A manager doesn't always look out for his boxer. Trainers look out for boxers, but you have to understand that a manager always thinks of himself. Now, I know this because I speak to managers on a daily basis and hmm, hmm, I'm going to say something and that shouldn't have done look all I'm going to say to you is this there's managers out there that they've not got the fighters best interests they haven't if you're a trainer and a manager I don't agree with it because you're going to want to put your fighter in a fight where he gets the most money for you as well as him does that sound right so I think it's a conflict of interest. So all you fighters out there who've turned professional, after three years of holding a license, you can manage yourself. So my advice is this, go and get a manager's license. And if you want any advice, just get in touch with me. I'll give you free advice. Free. That's nothing, I don't want a penny. That's free, good advice. And I'll give good advice. Now, there's people out there who are masquerading as managers, but they're not. They're advisors. They know who they are. They've not got board licenses, but it don't mean anything anyway, that. Well, I could name you eight, nine people now. So, me, myself as well, but I don't give advice to fighters. But if they want it, I will speak to them and give them advice, but I am not a board registered manager, but I can do what I want. I can do what I want. British Boxing Board of Control cannot tell me what to do. But I'd be more than welcome to have a chat with any fighters, if they want to have a chat, and I can give them some advice. I can just give good advice that's free. Now, for all you people out there, who want to send this video to British Boxing Board of Control, feel free, and even give you an email myself. Feel free, because I'm doing nothing wrong. I ain't got a board license. No, I ain't got a board license, but I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm not, what am I doing wrong? I'm not doing anything wrong. So, but I think that at the moment, this moment in time, there's a lot of people masquerading as managers without board licenses, but they're not doing anything wrong. They're only speaking to fighters. They only want it best interest for fighters. Once people start taking money off fighters for giving them advice, then there's a problem in my opinion. So I'm going to give advice to all boxers out there who are getting advice off people. Look, this is how I look at it. If they're taking money off you and they're not registered, make sure you're getting right advice. But if they're not taking money off you, just speak to as many people as you can in the sport. In fact, you probably might even be best off ringing Boxing Border Control up, because you're a registered license holder, if you're a fighter, aren't you? Ring them up and get advice. I can give you advice, I can tell you horror stories, and I can tell you great stories, but I tend to see a lot of people who are doing well in boxing, they tend to do well after they get their own license and manage themselves. But there's too many people out there being trainers 
and being a manager as well and I don't see how that can be right for example if you're getting a million pound for a fight say for instance you're on 20 grand a fight and you've got an opportunity to fight for 100 grand but you could also hold out and get a million pound for example we know certain people don't we who've trained people like I mean it's hard for me to do this we haven't mentioned names Joe Gallagher he kept Callum Smith away from world title shots didn't he with WBC because these fights weren't getting generating as much money now he can say he's doing his best for his fighter can't he which is all, set, all well but what are you doing the best for himself he managed to get Liam Smith a fight with Canelo that's a great payday for Liam but it's a great payday for Joe as well isn't it and if Joe's training him and managing him if he can get Liam into a position for the Canelo lottery ticket isn't that brilliant he could, be get, he could be getting anything up to a third of that money that's fantastic but he's put his time in he deserves it but maybe a manager might have wanted to go a different route than a trainer so you have a conflict of interest now for example Callum Smith well is Joe manager and training him or is Callum on his own I don't know but this is how I look at it boxing's a tough sport and quite right Joe Gallagher should get paid as well he's put his time in with them hasn't he but there's a lot of sharks out there so my advice to all you fighters out there is manage yourself after three years go and manage yourself and once you get that license once you've been fighting three years you just apply to the board go and get your license you can go your own way then you can choose who promotes you you can choose who fights you you have a bigger say in your career so do I think that there's people out there masquerading as promoters and managers who are just trainers yeah everybody does it don't they it's been going on years we have a lot of people telling tales to the board don't we so it is what it is isn't it well, like I said, Boxing Border Control never get in touch with me because they'll get two words from me and the second one is off. And the first one is F-U-C-K. That's my opinion on British Boxing Border Control. It's an old boys club run by old boys who do and say what they want. And nobody dare stand up to them. The establishment. Well, I stand up to them, don't I? So, it is what it is, isn't it? Or it is what it isn't. So, point of, my point is this. If you're a boxer and you're good, after three years, go and manage yourself. You're in a very, very strong position then. Just be very careful about what you sign, all right? Be very careful if you're signing contracts that say promoted by, managed by, and trained by. There's too many people out there that are promoted and managed and trained by the same people. It's a conflict of interest. Look out for yourself, guys, all right? There's nothing worse than wasted talent. Nothing worse. All right? Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire Packaging. And don't have nightmares, all right?